think it was yesterday when we were talking okay um what has happened to kamala harris like where is the bitch is she getting mothballed or what well actually that is the case because even the democrats are starting to have buyer's remorse on this one they installed her as the vice president there was no two ways about that biden came out and he immediately said i'm gonna have a woman as my vice president candidate and it's like, oh, okay, you got a really short list of really awful candidates. And you ran down, you picked the shortest straw, and Kamala Harris came out, and she had a litany of baggage, okay? She drew less than 1% in the primary. She got absolutely torched by Tulsi Gabbard. And she put more black men in chains than anybody in the 19th century and kept them there longer than any other member in the Democratic Party. So why the fuck was she there? Why was she there, okay? She's really shit on camera, too. It's not like she's charismatic. She's just a bit of a goof. No, she's a bit of a goof, and she's not charismatic whatsoever. Whenever she's pressed on a question, you get that awful, terrible, nails-on-the-chalkboard laugh that just doesn't make you want to listen to her, okay? There are plenty of women in government that I like. Plenty might be a bit of an overstatement, but I could throw out names, but this is not about identity politics. She is a shit vice president, and there's no two ways about it. Whenever she opens her yap, normally something gets inserted to it. I mean, something awful always tumbles out after about five minutes of good work. Dems worried about Kamala Harris approval. More harm than good as vice president. Kamala Harris poll numbers remain underwater and well below President biden's not by that much though some democrats are worried that she could become a drag on their efforts to maintain control of the congress in the 2020 midterm elections yeah as joe biden's looking more and more unstable as the days go on and she's looking more and more like she's going to be the 47th president uh people are asking questions people are very terrified why do you think the democrats are moving so swiftly on fucking everything and we'll get to what they're moving on very shortly but buyer's remorse, man, it's setting in just as quickly as their accelerated platform is taking hold. A new Economist YouGov poll shows that 48% of Americans disapprove of Harris's job performance. That's actually better. While only 46% expressed approval. Those are actually eerily similar to what Biden has, but we'll get to him shortly. This is a lot. Oh, this is in line with a, fl a flurry. Sorry, Jesus of recent surveys and puts her well behind Biden, whose real clear average of polls has a 51% approval and 43% disapproval. Oh, I got different numbers though, and Rasmussen was actually right for uh, Trump. They were a lot more accurate when it came to polling for the presidential election in the uncontested states and in most of the contested states as well. So, okay. What do they have here? Biden's approval hits new low at 46% and 52% just outright disapprove. So it's a little bit different than the YouGov poll that the New York Post was citing, but it's not terribly far off. New poll released by Rasmussen reports on Wednesday morning shows that President Joe Biden's approval rating has dropped to its lowest levels of his presidency thus far at 46%. His disapproval rating of 52% puts him six points underwater. The latest figures include 26% who strongly approve of Joe Biden's job. Who would those people be? I don't, I don't get it. Is friends and family? And 42% who strongly disapprove. That seems fair because I used to, you know, try to give him the benefit of the doubt, but he's absolutely wore out that welcome. Daily tracking results are collected via telephone surveys of 500 likely voters per night and reported on a three-day rolling average basis to reach those who have abandoned traditional phone lines. Rasmussen uses an online survey tool to interview randomly selected participants for the demographically diverse panel, and that's their standard methodology, okay? It's not really that big of a sample size, but it's what they use, and it tends to be fairly accurate. You can go back and you can check any of the polling that they did leading up to any one of the elections and they're within a few points okay they're normally fairly good biden has been in the high 40s and low 50s throughout much of his presidency thus far with the poll he has hit a previous low of 47 percent in late march and occasionally thereafter but was at 51 percent as recently as last week however new bad news about the coronavirus and the administration's aggressive campaign on vaccinations as well as inflation could be taking a toll yeah 
That's exactly why there's such a, uh, relatively speaking, such a large fluctuation in his approval rating. Because one day he's telling you, oh, if you guys do everything that I just asked you to, you'll be able to have your freedom back on Independence Day. And what do you celebrate on Independence Day? A nice long weekend. That's what Kamala told you, right? And then all of a sudden the flip reverse that, oh, yeah, we should be looking at masks more. And I think we should potentially start handing out the jab. Huh? I'm just going to explore that for federal workers. That was not but 24 hours ago, and here we go. Here we go. I hate to tread the same ground day after day over and over again, but when it gets accelerated like this, you guys need to know the information because, oh yeah, it's just going to start with a nudging of federal employees because, yeah, they report eventually directly to Joe Biden at the end of the day. So yeah, once he starts pushing for vaxes for federal workers, then it'll be the subsidiaries that get subsidization from the government, and then it just trickles out from there. But we got more on that. We'll just uh, cover this not shocking, but um, disappointing development. The Biden administration will ask every federal government employee and on-site contractor, there it is, to attest to their vaccination status against the novel coronavirus while encouraging local and state governments to offer $100 as an incentive for people to roll up their sleeves. Could you imagine, right? Because we've seen, what was it, like Ohio, um, Louisiana. There were several states that were out there offering million-dollar lotteries if you would just go in there and you would get the jab. They've achieved like 60, 70, 80% of adults, people who are eligible to get the vaccine, have been vaccinated at this point. What more do you want? The rest of the population will be taken care of by natural immunities, but you don't want to talk about any of that anymore. It's all about 100% compliance. It's not about choice. It's about listening to your big overlords. Now, President Joe Biden insisted Thursday that the dramatic policy shift was not partisan politics, praising Republican vaccine advocates. Of course, of course, the ones that are blaming the unvaccinated because you didn't have the balls to come out and say it first. This is not about red states and blue states. Oh my God, what are you going to be? A God, I'm going to be a president for all Americans. Fuck off, Joe. It's literally about life and death. <laughs> really? And you think getting the jab is going to somehow stop you from dying? Really think that? Hmm. Seems like the numbers have something to do with contradicting that advice. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> with freedom comes responsibility. What freedom? Hmm. And what responsibility? I'm all for responsibility, but you telling me to do something is not responsibility. You asking me to do more with no tangible benefit to me? That's not a negotiation I tend on entering into. So please exercise responsible judgment. Okay, so it's either freedom, a responsibility, or a judgment, and then get vaccinated. It's like, what? you don't even know, Joe. You don't even know, but that could be said about literally anything. His fucking dinner order, for all we know. Biden's announcement coincides with more contagious Delta variant sure it is. The resurgence has led to an uptick in cases, even among vaccinated people, but you take a look at the numbers that actually matter, and they're still at pandemic lows. So what's with all of this fucking insanity? New policy means federal workers who cannot attest that they are fully vaccinated. So if they don't show their papers will be required to wear a mask regardless of their location, physically distance uh, from their colleagues and visitors. So just basically be put in solitary confinement. Interesting. Unity and healing, trademark. Oh, and then on top of that, comply with weekly or twice weekly testing requirements and be subject to travel restrictions. Remember when we were drawing parallels to the NFL, they were going to be the test case for what other big corporations and potentially the government was going to do? That's the exact same policy that the NFL put into place and enough fucking players caved and now it's just a government mandate. It's not hard to connect the dots. You just have to take the most, I don't know, darkest path, <laughs> unfortunately. But what do I know? I'm apparently in the minority. I would have voted for the other guy. But at least there's no mean tweets. Policy means federal workers who, my mistake, more than 4 million people are employed by the federal government, including upward of 2 million civilians. How many of those people actually have the jab? Like, what's the fucking percentage of people that are probably already fully vaccinated within that core? I don't think it's an insignificant. I don't think that it's below the national average. I would, in fact, think that it's much higher. Because people who are on the government tit for a living probably think a certain way. 
Could the contractors be a little bit different? Yeah, potentially, because they work on a certain time frame, so they could be a little bit different, but you can't quite see it, but it's just over there in the corner. NFL quarterback says he was pressured by the league to get vaccinated. If you don't fall in line, they'll make your life miserable. That's Ryan Tannehill, the quarterback for the Tennessee Titans. Not exactly an unobscure player, and he's finally just coming out and saying enough's enough, and he said it. He didn't tweet it, and then just a couple hours later, delete it, but Still pulling for you, DeAndre Hopkins. Just uh, find your balls, stand up. But here's another example of some more baby steps encroaching on your freedoms because they just aren't ready to fully enforce getting vaccinations or fully enforcing vaccine passports, which are definitely going to be coming. I would imagine by the end of the summer, by the time, you know, regular flu season kicks up. Don't be shocked by that. Don't be shocked by that. Just get prepared for it. And I don't want to say anything more. I'm thinking of things I want to say more, but I don't want to say anything else. Part of an updated strategy to boost vaccination rates, ugh, small and medium-sized businesses are eligible to be reimbursed for providing employees paid leave so they can take family members, including children, ugh, to vaccination appointments. Biden's $1.9 trillion coronavirus spending package is currently reimburses those business for giving paid leave to their staff to receive the shots themselves. What about the days afterwards when they feel like absolute hell? And now it's coming to the unions because you guys, I, I don't think I'm breaking any ground here, but the unions and the Democrat party, they're totally in bed with one another. Not the employee member or the union members themselves. They're normally fairly free thinkers and they normally, the unions themselves represent people that don't necessarily hold the same opinions of the unions. Just take a look at like the pipe fitters unions, the culinary unions. They are more or less just kind of slaves to their profession. All of those businesses or all of those industries had been unionized already prior to them coming into it. And then they have to pay a certain tax towards the union who just kind of sits back and endorses whoever the Democrat is on the ticket. And this right here, restaurant groups, CEO can, or customers will have to prove, oh, give proof of COVID-19 vaccinations. Remember, the government is not going to institute any vaccine passports, especially if they're lackeys. All of the unions, all the big business will do the dirty work for them. Why? Because my private company can do whatever they want. Founder of Shake Shack, Danny Meyer, said his Union Square Hospitality Group will require indoor diners and drinkers at its restaurants to show that they have been vaccinated against COVID-19. Employees will also have to get the vaccine, Meyer said, although he didn't say whether they would be fired or forced to wear masks. Oh, I'm sure their lives will be made a living hell, so don't worry about it, and they'll be forced to just, I don't know, clean the same closet for the rest of the time. However, the policy will not be extended to Shake Shack, a hamburger fast food restaurant that has numbers of locations in the northeastern United States. The policy will be implemented at the Union Square Hospitality Group, which oversees Gramercy Tavern, Manhattan, and Union Square Cafe. The group operates Anchovy Social in Washington as well. So it's just starting out there. And then, yeah, okay, they operate in fucking Manhattan, for Christ's sakes. I didn't have any of the articles pulled up, but you can always just double-check me if you don't believe me. But Bill de Blasio, mayor of New York, czar of New York, whatever you want to call him at this point, he keeps floating out rhetoric where he's uh, alluding to vaccine passports for New York City. He's alluding to forced vaccinations for all of his employees, everybody who's on the government tit there. And then 5 a.m. Saturday morning, Muriel Bowser, the mayor of Washington, D.C., is dropping a mask mandate for everybody regardless everybody over the age of two years old it wasn't that long ago you're we laughing at anthony fauci for saying oh i don't know i think people who have got the vaccine uh, everybody over the age of two should probably be still wearing a mask how long before double masking starts coming back into the news cycle <laughs> oh, i can't wait <laughs> but don't worry it's going to Corporate America, they're going to be following that dickhead, Danny Myers lead, because the weirdos are at the reins. What are you going to do with a gender studies degree? Oh, it's just going to stay in universities. Well, guess what? These people have connections, and now these people are in power, and they're going to tell you exactly what to do, because they were the ones who got bullied in school, who never got over it, and they just want to flex their power on everybody. After months of reluctance, corporate America is taking a stand on keeping its returning workers safe. Really, CNN? Fucking really? 
I just figured we'd throw in something retarded from a fucking leftist outlet, so uh, do forgive me if my head explodes. A growing number of companies are requiring vaccinations for employees, in some cases for clients and customers, who that base will be shrinking ever so quickly. Most companies are allowing for very rare religious and health exemptions, but will quickly phase them out, right comrade? But the I need something, oh, I read something scary on Facebook excuse doesn't apply anymore. That's what they're dismissing vaccine hesitancy as. Silicon Valley is leading the way. Leading the way? Where exactly? Straight to hell? Pretty, pretty much, pretty much. Facebook and Google announced all employees returning to the office must be vaccinated. Netflix, yes, the first studio, I think we talked about this yesterday, right? In the first studio to mandate the vaccine, actors and anybody who's on stage A, so producers, directors, everybody who's of consequence there, soon to be just everybody, but that's where it is, at least right now. Wall Street offices are filling up fat or filing up fast, really, really, and vaccines are required. The financial sector says get vaxxed or find a new job. BlackRock, <laughs> no kidding, and Morgan Stanley, I'm shocked. Announced all employees must be vaccinated to return to the office. Cool. Cool. Remember when leftists used to be against big corporations and now they're just lining up with them unironically? <laughs> oh, how the pendulum is swung. And when it swings back, it's going to fucking shatter everything. Mark my words. It is a diverse list. Really? Oh, okay. Saks Fifth, Fifth Avenue, The Washington Post, Ascension Health, and Lyft are also requiring the shot to work. I, I don't see any diversity in there whatsoever, but then again, I consider diversity to be diversity of thought, but um, these people just think because somebody drives or somebody writes some shit article laced with propaganda and works at a healthcare institute or, I don't know, peddles thousands of dollars worth of bags that's somehow more admirable and more diverse, whatever. It's good business. Oh, okay, cool. I guess I don't need to read any further. Johnny Taylor Jr. of the Society of Human Resource Management, a position that should not exist and a person who should be shot, says most employees want vaccine mandates. Can you cite the source on that one? But you also work for an HR specialty corporation. So you have the Karenest of Karens out there. Just the motherfuckers who've been asking for the manager for decades at this point. So you probably are kind of stuck in this little echo chamber at the moment where everybody thinks that uh, big daddy government isn't quite stepping on their neck hard enough so you just need to go ahead and tie a rope and just pull a little bit harder because the feeling of control hasn't quite left your body yet they want to know their workplace is safe when people return his polling shows nearly 70 percent of employees want their co colleagues to be vaccinated they want other people to be vaccinated they want to tell you what to do and they're just going to do it because it's safe and secure sure and patience has worn thin with vaccine hesitance. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, this isn't sounding like the early days of a genocide. Not at all. Not whatsoever. And especially when Nancy Pelosi wants to start throwing people in jail. Yeah, no, this is exactly what she said. And this was fairly early in the morning. So she was only probably a couple drinks in. So you could at least take this as some sort of, uh, for Nancy Pelosi, a lucid take. Orders police to arrest mask mandate defiers. On federal ground, she wants you thrown in jail, which is fucking weird and runs a little bit contrary to what the Democrats were doing at the outset of this pandemic some decade and a half ago, it seems like at this point. Oh, oh, we don't want anybody to get sick in jail, so just uh, anybody who's low risk, feel free to get rid of them. Or if you're on Rikers Island, uh, just get rid of some violent sex offenders, and I'm sure that they've learned their lesson and they won't do anything bad. Oh, wait, rapes, murders, and arsons, <laughs> burglaries, and riots are all the way through the roof? Huh, I wonder who would have instigated all that shit. Hmm, fucking questions that'll go unanswered. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi on Thursday gave her absolute unconditional surrender to the Chinese coronavirus by forcing congressional members to f and staff to wear special well-fitted super masks. Ugh, what do they come from, Krypton? They make it so they can't smell the booze on your breath from across the room. Oh, okay, that, that's what makes them super. Before ordering the U.S. Capitol Police to arrest those who do not comply. 
Uh, that's the only time that she actually calls the Capitol Police. Not when there's something happening. No, she tells them to stand down. But um, if anybody's not wearing their diaper on their face, oh, you need to take them in. You need to stuff those prisons full of those goddamn anti-vaxxers. In the Capitol Police bulletin, she specified all United States Capitol Police personnel must wear a mask at all times when the interior space is throughout the Capitol grounds. Uh, additionally, she directed officers who work on the House side of the Capitol to enforce the policy on staff and and visitors. She only does this because she gets a power trip off of it. I think that's pretty obvious at this point. She just loves being in power and she loves flexing that power. What was that? The 2018 or 2019? 2019 State of the Union Address, I think, where she made it all about herself after Trump literally just was up there dropping truth bombs and everybody was applauding. And then the white clad syndicate of just absolute decrepit cunts just wouldn't clap for fucking war veterans. Nancy Pelosi stood up and rip the State of the Union address because it needed to be about her. She's a terrible human being. Nobody should take her seriously. And I really hope the Capitol Police gets their head out of their fucking ass, stops listening to propagandists like that one retard who thinks Brian Sicknick was killed that day at the Capitol riot and it was so bad and it was even worse than the 2020 riots. What are you fucking retarded? No, you're a propagandist. You're on the take and you guys need to stop start fucking taking i can't believe i'm gonna say this start taking the lead from european police officers i've heard of ones in london and in france in some places who joined the anti-vaccine passport protesters that needs to start happening otherwise this is just gonna slip down and there's gonna be a point of no return I don't know. I, during 2020, during the actual riots, I didn't think that it would ever get to a point of civil war, okay? Did I think it was getting a little bit testy? Yeah, perhaps. But did I think there was any incentive for the right to really stand up against this stuff? Not really, because it was all just going to peter out by the time the election came around. And then, yeah, the aftermath and then the craziness of that ensued. Did it get a little testy at times i think it peaked at about the capitol hill and then after that yeah, everything kind of dropped off there was the million mega march and there was a couple of different ones in between then and there there's been a few trump rallies but outside of that riots from the right or any sort of pushback really hasn't existed yet and if they get their way if democrats get their way on this one um yeah i don't want to think about about the next six months because it could get fucking dicey could get really dicey but some people are actually pushing back okay uh, you got the unions you got one union uh, that's bending the knee to this insanity and many more just lining up to be governed harder daddy but then you have the postal union okay who for the first time in their history endorsed the presidential candidate the one that's currently in office and um might have had something to do with that and may maybe their endorsement was so powerful don't look at anything the project veritas did but for them to come against this and be vocal about not going to be hopping on the bandwagon for federal employees to be wearing masks at all times regardless of vaccination status that puts a little light at the end of the tunnel okay that gives you a little bit of hope that there are some people out there that are willing to push back it's not a lot and i don't really put a lot of faith in any letter carriers at this day and age finally got a good one in my neighborhood but for the most part they are about the dumbest people in society they get paid a lot of money to do a whole hell of a lot of nothing i want to go back to the days of horseback riding through the sleet and snow rain or hail american postal workers union which represents more than 200,000 united states postal service employees and retirees and nearly 20 or 2,000 private sector mail workers on Wednesday expressed concern over Biden's administration's vaccine mandate for federal workers. The APWU said in a statement, various media outlets have reported that the White House is considering mandatory vaccinations as a condition of employment for federal employees. Maintaining the health and safety of our members is of paramount importance. Well, the APWU leadership continues to encourage postal workers to voluntarily get vaccinated. It is not the role of the federal government to mandate vaccinations for the employees we represent. Thank God somebody in power finally fucking said it. Issue related to vaccinations and testing for COVID-19 in the workplace must be negotiated with the APWU. At this time, the APWU opposes the mandating of COVID-19 vaccinations in relation to the United States postal workers. Thank God. 
thank fucking god and we can end on a positive note somebody's pushing back we'll see if there's anybody else who lines up and hopefully we can take a break on this horse shit for a minute but i i kind of doubt that because i didn't expect the acceleration from yesterday into today so who knows maybe the old man will be a little bit too tired and he wants a three-day weekend so we'll get a little bit of the insanity and a little bit of a break but with that said thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo i want you to follow your gut and get after it take care everyone